Oh, Punkin, you're so cute, Punkin. Both my babies over here. So much love and cuteness. Yes, you too, Toby. You too, Toby. Good boy, Toby. Hey, what's up, garden friends? I'm starting the vlog on the phone because getting ready to leave. Got some errands to run. And it's just easier in the editing process if I can keep all of the stuff from the phone separate from the things from the cameras and jumping back and forth because I have to render them separately and like glue them together. It's a whole big thing. It doesn't matter. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just hanging out. During the garden tour, I was going to give an update on the terrariums here, and then I realized that there's not really much to update. I planted a begonia in one, there's some new ferns in the other. I did add some springtails to this one, this one, and that one. But that, that's it. And there's a whole bunch of java moss in here that I pulled out of the filter of my fish tank and tossed in there. It was clogging up my overflow, and I thought, well, I'll go ahead and put it in there. It's nice and humid. Should do well in there. If not, then it doesn't matter because this whole terrarium was doing fine before that. This is a much better angle. I wish I'd use this for the garden tour. The basket looks so much nicer from inside, except for the screen in the window. I hate how the screens obstruct the view, but very necessary because the bugs. Oh, so many bugs. So there's no shortage of things to do outside. However, um, I kind of messed my back up just a little bit last week. Didn't awful lot out here that was all in the vlog for um when i got the new furniture and everything and you know i had to get rid of the table that was falling apart and there were palm trees all over the place and i didn't really show the process but it was a lot and uh, yeah i did go like a year without doing very much just like a little pinch just a pinch nerve i really it felt like if you ever had a rib out felt like that and then I did the thing that you're not supposed to do and I laid on a shiatsu pad because I was like determined to pop that rib back into place. Huge mistake, knew I shouldn't have done it, did it anyways, and then now I've just been like hanging out like a human blob for the last week while that all heals and gets better. And it is feeling much, 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 much better already, but I just don't want to push things. I've gone through and set lots of plants where they need to go, but I'm just like, ugh, I'm afraid, I'm nervous. I want to give my back, my ribs, a couple more days to rest before I start digging back into those things. So I figure I have a bunch of errands I need to run. I can just, we can go run errands. Who wants to run errands? That sound like fun? Maybe? I don't know. Can run some errands and maybe get a little bit of work done out here in the garden. Mostly I need to go to the hardware store and get a shower head. Super exciting. Bird seed. Also exciting. And um, some more drip line because I'm out of quarter inch and half inch drip line. The a lot of my drip lines that I have are really really old and they've gotten so hard to the point that I'm having a lot of trouble squeezing the emitters into them. And any of the ones that are broken, I've been out here trying to replace them and fix them up, but it's taking a long time to snap those together. So I have some old lines that I need to replace because they're getting old. And then I had mentioned I had a bunch of petunias. I can show you the petunias. They look terrible. Show the petunia. It is so weird. On camera, there's like, it looks like filth here where it needs to be repainted, but I swear in person, I can't see that. I can feel it, but I can't really see it. Huh. Okay, another painting project. Uh, the Adenidia palms out here. These uh, were going to get planted up with a whole bunch of. <laughs> with a whole bunch of different petunias and I mentioned in the garden tour that where I had these petunias sitting the drip line that was under them cracked and they got drenched just totally drenched and some of them are just like almost completely rotted out like this one right here this is Supertunia Vista Fuchsia there's not much hope for that one or this one this one still has some life in it but not much. They're looking pretty shabby. Some of them are okay, but I need some more Vista Fuchsias if I can find them. I, that might be an issue. And since I'm going to the nursery figure, I may as well look for the Supertunia honeys, since I'll be there, because I would like to have those in these planters, but I don't find them anywhere. And some, maybe some Dragonwing Begonias, maybe another Lantana tree, because I think that it would look nice if those were on each side of my stairs, but... Oh, that was a nice big jump pumpkin. You're a good jumper. But that is kind of a big ask. I don't know if I'll be able to find all those things. I can just find some of them. 
that would be okay. I also did a big cleaning on this tank last night and realized I need to come in here and do some pruning on this pothos. It's getting out of hand. I don't want that to start hooking up. That's neither here nor there. I won't be doing that in the vlog. This was just cleaned. These fish, they're all jumpy and splashy. I have a lid on top of it, but water spots. Always lots and lots and lots of water spots. And I didn't, I need to do an algae scrape. It's a daily thing trying to keep the water spots off of this tank because like I said, the splashing. Anyways, but where are you going, pumpkin? Where are you going? Okay, bye pumpkin. So that's what's going on there. Wanna go? Run some errands. Harrison's going to a nursery. I haven't been to any nurseries in a pretty long time. By a pretty long time, I mean like maybe three weeks, possibly a month, I don't know. It'll probably be pretty quick in and out because I'm trying to stay off my feet. Hey, hummingbird. Or was that a cicada? No, that's a hummingbird. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There you are. There you are. Oh, so cute. <laughs> what are you doing? What's up? You have a fascination with the, you drunk? Where are you going? <laughs> what is it doing? They perch in those palm fronds sometimes. So maybe it's just trying to find a place to sit. I don't know. Okay, that was weird. And there it went. Okay. Let's go hit up some nurseries. Just have a glance at things. Okay. Do I wear a mask? I haven't, I haven't really been out since all that stuff started changing. I guess I'll take it with me, just in case. I was going to go back to the greenhouse, which is actually right next to this place, but they're closed. I forgot that they're only open for like a couple months a year, so here I am at this nursery, and then I'm gonna go to Greenscape, which I'm really excited about. I'm just popping in here because sometimes I have heliconias, which I know, I know I have plenty of heliconias, but gather my things, get out of the car. But all that cold we had back in April and May, they're not looking too good. It's just, it's right here, so I figured I'd stop in and see what they have. Lots of plants, kind of, whoa. Big rapid of forest. Pricey ripper for it. Philodendrons, figs, ferns. Loving, loving, loving all the green. Whole bunch of caladiums from proven winners. Tons of them. Uh, cast iron plants. Love them. There's only a few that are hardy into zone six and let me tell you, these things are merely bug magnets. So if I can't keep them outside, where the cold can help control the pests. I don't bother with them, but, but they're such great plants though. They do make a nice house plant if you don't have to worry about pests. They're so simple and fun to grow. Lemon blush, one of my favorites. So cute. Look at these Bidens. Pretty and pink, they're so cute. So cute, I love Bidens. Some fun variegated fuchsias. There's a teeny tiny little bit of baby lantana tree. I don't think that's going to be big enough. Oh. Bougainvillea. What Bougainvillea? That is a cool gumfrina. It's more of like a coral. Can you even see? It's like a corally orange color to it. Does it smell as bad as all the other gumfrinas? No, it does not. I might get one of these. If I can get it out. There we go. Got three growths in there. It's not too bad. Should I get two? Maybe I should get two. No, one's enough. Control yourself. I also have a couple milkweeds here. I have so many Asclepius perennial varieties. I can't find my seeds for the Curse of Acas, which are sometimes perennial, but none of mine came back from last year. Texas Sage. All silvery and fluffy. Fun plants. Okay, yeah, they didn't really have anything I need, so going to Greenscape. Also should clarify by they didn't have anything I need. That doesn't mean that I didn't get things. There's plants back there. Oh my gosh. This is the cutest little Robolini palm. Look at it. It's perfect. Just some nice bananas. Ooh, look at these uh, kelfas. Jackpot. Oh, they have tons of pink dragon wings. Lots of them. Perfect. The camera's also, I can't get to zoom out. Sorry about that. There we go. I think a dozen should do. They have the Vista Fuchsias. That is a big relief. Look at all the color over here. Isn't it just beautiful? Verbenas and Salosias and Salvias and Zinnias just keeps going. And it smells absolutely divine out here. It smells so open good.
couple more begonias. I don't know why I was tempted to get some. I think I have enough here. This is a neat cup thing. It's called Torpedo. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Look at how beautiful is it is pretty. Didn't need the sunglasses. No, it's prettier without the sunglasses. Everything's so lush and green and the sky's all blue. It's a gorgeous. Yeah, I um I didn't film much at the last nursery. There are a lot of people there. And then I was just really excited about plants, but you'll see what I got when we get back to the house. Right now, head to the hardware store. All right, Lowe's is totally packed too, but we can get some little sneaks at some things. Look at the lilies. LA Summer Scarlet. Oh, they smell so good. Oh, what do we have here? Finally, I had gotten the limoncellos instead because I couldn't find the honeys anywhere back in April or May. But I just, the thing is, I don't, I don't know really crazy about the limoncello. It's something about them. I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't really like them that much. Lots of fun perennials. I have the Sweet Romance Lavender. Hey, you had this, yes. Those are going to be beautiful here in a few weeks. Whoa. Uh, lots of stuff on clearance and a lot of trucks in the background behind me. I can't remember why I'm here, but I'm pretty sure it was something inside. Oh, a shower head. I need a new shower head. Houseplants. Nothing crazy, just your standard houseplants. Look at the relias. These are pretty big. I love that purple. Some beautiful portalaca. Purslane. I haven't planted any of this in such a long time because the way the sun's changed in the backyard, the flowers close up when the sun's off of them. I only get to enjoy the flowers for like a couple hours and that's about it. But I used to plant these everywhere because the flowers glow. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Absolutely stunning. One of my favorite annuals, but eh, not anymore. Don't really have a spot for them in the back. Well, I do. I could put them in a bed, but most of my flower beds, you know, they're very, very, very heavily irrigated. So I don't think it would do very well. Nice callas. Hey, and the black coral elfin ears actually look like they might be black corals this year. Past couple of years they've been like light green and they've had the ones that were dark didn't have like any sheen to them. They were very bottom shelf black coral elfin ears. It's time for me to go. The cart's very full. Ooh, these are neat salvias. What is this? Mystify? M Misty. Misty salvia. Flowers. Fun gray with that purple, so pretty. Look at you too. Oh, you got as soon as I start talking about you, you gotta leave. As soon as I start talking about you, you gotta leave, huh, pumpkin? Hey, Toby, I miss you, Toby. So much love in this house. Got a lot done while I was out today, and the new umbrellas here. I feel like I spend too much time talking about umbrellas on this channel, but look, I mean, that one looks stupid. I love that dog so much. He has such a happiness in his steps. It reminds me of, this, I don't know, it was a cartoon my sister used to have me watch over and over and over again with her when we were kids. Uh, I don't know, I don't think it was Black Stallion. Maybe it was Black Beauty. There is a pony called Merry Legs. Just a sweet little chunky thing that ran around with some sprite in its step. Um, that reminds me of Toby. He also reminds me in Jumanji that during the stampede scene and all the animals come flying through and at the very tail end there's a rhino or a hippo trotting along the caboose of everything. That also, yeah, that also reminds me of Toby. Okay, all right, Sony. Let's get this out of here. Oh, all right, I'm okay with the color. You never know what you're gonna get color-wise on line when something says blue. Like, what does that mean? Blue. There's all different kinds of blue. Well, that can't be right. <laughs> Look at that. It's, no, it's a way too high. Why? Well, I know why. The pole, it's way too thick. It doesn't fit all the way down in here. So this is, this part right here should be like two and a half feet lower into the tip. I'm gonna have to send it back. That's not gonna work. Why'd they make the pole so thick? This is a table that was made for an 11 foot umbrella. So I'd assume that this right here was the standard size. This is the size of pole that was in there. But this is, I mean, this is, that's a really, it's girthy. Yeah. 
I feel like the slightest breeze that's going to fly away. I mean, it's kind of fun having it all the way up there, but though, no. Look, it's even crooked. It's not even staying right. Dangerous. Yes, I should send it back. Probably shouldn't even have set this up because I'm trying to rest my back. That was, it was pretty heavy. Oops, I'm sure it's fine. How do I send something like this back? This thing's freaking huge. Well, this was a learning opportunity. It's gotta make sure the pole fits next time. It fits in the top, but the base of the table that it goes down to, it's like, it goes from big and then it like narrows in there. I could probably drill it out. This is a brand new table. I don't want to do that. That seems like a bad idea. Not worth it. It's just an umbrella. And this wasn't even like a super nice one. It was relatively inexpensive considering how much these umbrellas cost. <laughs> you shouldn't have to reach up into the sky to get to that to put it up and down. Does it have a crank tilt? If I keep cranking it, will it tilt or will it just break? I don't see a button on the tilty part though. Is there a button? Oh, there is a button. That's another thing. I can never reach that to get to the tilt. Nope. It really opens the view up nicely over here. You can see into the crown of the palm tree. Couldn't do that before. I have to put it back in the box, figure out how to return it. I'm sure it's not that complicated. Oh, too bad. Look at how pretty. What a pretty umbrella. It has the little almost pagoda shape to it. <laughs> it's, it's leaning, looking all weird. They're gonna play with around with it. It's more mean that maybe I can take the top pole and put it over the bottom pole. Don't think I'm supposed to do that, but I might give it a try. I feel like that's a bad idea though. I think the bottom pole would just slide all the way up into the other one. Yeah, well, I tried. Where are you going, pumpkin? Oh, you stalking Charlie? There's another cat sitting right there. All right, I'm gonna wait for this one. Finish eating his dinner, hey Toby, and then go to a little plant hall. Look at the stuff I brought home from the nurseries. Okay, go ahead and get that out of the way. I'm pretty sure for the most part, y'all already know a lot of what I got here, but I thought it might still be fun to go through some of it. I didn't go through all of it. I didn't get a ton. But for starters, the Super Tunia Honey. Y'all already know I got those, right? I was so excited that I was able to find these. Really happy I was able to find those. Like I said, the Limoncello, I just, I don't think it was gonna do it for me. And I've talked about with the Super Tunia Honeys before. They, they, I don't know. They're not my favorite. I like the color on them a lot. But anytime I've grown them, I haven't been like thoroughly impressed with their growth. They kind of remind me of a Calibret Koa in the sense that if they get too moist, they just get kind of lanky and weird looking. There might be some Calibrac DNA in there. I don't know, but I'm happy to have them. I'm going to be giving them a shot. And then I also got one of these Gomfrinas, which we saw at one of the nurseries, Keith Thread. QIS Red Gomfrina, is that how you say that? I have no idea. I have to hold it sideways to be able to get those flowers in frame. I really love the color of the flowers on here. They start off red, like you can see down here, this is a newer flower, flower head on there. A scarlet red down low and it fades to a lighter red up top with tiny little yellow flowers that poke, off, poke out. I said poke off. And then they age into sort of a nice orangey color. Really pretty. The pink, what is it, Truffle of Pink Gomfrina from Proven Winners. I really, really, really enjoyed that plant, but it smelt. I, I, maybe it was something else I had planted in the area. I'm not sure. I just remember the year that I planted those being kind of blown away with how stinky that entire spot was where I had them. Look at this one. Oh, it's so pretty. Atlantis Stone Crop. It's a sedum. Sedum Tekis Simit. Simit. This one right here. That one. And then there's the info there if it's not focused. I'll read it off. Gets four to six inches high, space 10 to 12 inches apart, blooms mid to late summer. It likes a direct sun. More than six hours a day. I've wanted one of these sedums for a pretty long time. Whenever I've been able to find them for sale, they've been in fairly small nursery containers, like four inch containers, and usually like 12 or $15 for them. This is a nice big pot. Very, very, very full. And this is hardy too. What's the hardiness range on here? It's a four through nine, which is good because I'll probably be having this in a container and I will have that container outside all year. It won't be evergreen, but I won't have to really worry about protecting the container too much since four through nine. That's plenty cold hardy for zone six. So pretty. There are a lot of variegated sedums, but this particular one, I don't know what it is. It's maybe the color of the variegation, the size of the variegation. I tend to be really picky with variegated plants. I don't always love it, but this is one, I think I first saw this maybe at Plant Delights Nursery in their catalog or one that was very similar to this years ago. And I've wanted one ever since. I'm really happy that I was able to find that one, that nice, nice big one. And you all saw the Asclepius, right? I got two of those from the first nursery. They don't have any flowers on them yet. 
There's the deep red. I grabbed another one when I was at Greenscape. I don't know why. Didn't need it, but there's the tag. Silky deep red. So Curaceveca, which are generally zone seven and up. I just touched a button by accident. I either turned my stabilization on or off. Then on my viewfinders tell me what happened there. Oops. Where I live, these are often sold as either perennials or annuals. You'll find them in either department, the Curaceveca that is, because sometimes they'll come back here in 6A, 6B. Mine don't usually come back, but sometimes they'll reseed themselves. Like I mentioned though, I have so so much Asclepius, so much milkweed, perennial milkweed. Uh, the tuberose variety is what I'm growing in my butterfly pollinator garden area. I really don't need more, but it's just out of habit. I plant them every year. I like to throw them into my mixed containers. The monarchs love them. And I really just in, actually enjoy the way that these look. I like their flowers on the curse of echoes. I just think that they're neat looking plants. I don't know, I shouldn't have moved them out of Oh, they're still in frame. Okay, I thought I moved them out of frame while I was still talking about them. I'm like, well, that's a dumb thing to do. Okay. Look at all that. These are pink dragon's wing begonias, and then I have three supertunia vista fuchsias here, and then I should have a couple more in the group. Do I? Did I get up all of them? No, I did. I got four of the supertunia vista fuchsias. So those combined with the honey and the other ones that you saw in the beginning of the video, I'll have all those to finish off the pots on the front porch. We'll be back here eventually. This is... It's, I, it's a lot. I know it's a lot of dragon's wing begonias. They're one of my favorite annuals. They make fine house plants. And uh, I just, I wanted them everywhere this year. I want them patched throughout the garden. I want them patched throughout all my planters. They get huge. They have fun, beautiful, shiny, glossy foliage on them. The way the flowers come over and dangle. Similar to a dicentra, but they do it all summer long. The pollinators enjoy them. Hummingbirds enjoy trying to get up in there. I don't know like how great these are for the pollinators as far as nectar is concerned, but they enjoy the dangliness of them. I love the color of the foliage. I love the finish of the foliage with it being all shiny and glossy. I love their ease of growth. These in here will all likely at least triple in size by the end of the year. So I am super stoked that I was able to get my hands on this many. I only, okay, here's the thing though. On my plant list, I actually only needed eight more of these. I should say need, wanted eight more of these. That's why I went ahead and grabbed a dozen so I could have four extras. I am doing some hanging baskets and some things for some other people this summer. So whatever four I don't use here in the next week or so, I'm gonna bump them up into larger pots because you know, they can only stay in these little nursery containers for so long. I'll start to struggle and suffer and look sad in those. Okay, there's a few more here. And then there's a couple in the gorilla cart that are a bit too large to bring over here. You see these? Aren't they beautiful? No, you couldn't see them. Ugh, tripods sinking down. So I grabbed four more of these Colocasia Maui Golds. I have some planters. I want to pop smaller uh, Colocasias in and the Maui Golds. If you watch my videos, one of my favorites. These little ones aren't really showing their true nature just yet, but they get a really, really shiny foliage on them that has a, it's a nice lime green color and it's really shiny. I think there's something about that just looks really lush and vibrant and just overall healthy. Some colocasias or really just any plant that has really big leaves on it. And these are still babies. These leaves will be like this big. Can't even keep it in frame. They'll be gigantic by the end of the season. With really big, bold foliage plants, sometimes they can end up looking dry and washed out. They aren't the right tone and don't have a nice finish to them. That's one of the reasons I like this one so much. So I grabbed four of these. Now, I did in the garden tour talk about how I have a whole bunch of tubers from these left over from last year that they just managed to survive in one of my potted plants. I had them plants with my bird of paradise last year and that I had set them and I have a lot of fun digging those up and playing with them. And I meant that I could have used those but I wanted something where I would have a sure thing. That's why I got these, the tubers that I have left over. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't be okay, but this was kind of an instant gratification thing. It's already June at this point. I want something that already has some growth on it. I'm just justifying wanting to buy them because I wanted that instant gratification. Really, when it gets warm outside, if I were to have planted these from their tuber or from that bulb by like mid-July, they would more than likely catch up. I don't feel like wait until mid-July. I want them now. I want them looking beautiful right now. Look at it. So pretty. Just simple and green, but makes me happy. Makes my heart smile. And I grabbed a wire vine. I don't really know why, it's just a plant that I really enjoy. They have such fun texture to them. And look at that. It almost looks fake. The way the leaves come off from the tiny little stems on the side. Plant that has a lot of randomness to it, but it almost looks like it's intentionally random. I'm putting way too much thought into it. It's a fun plant to 
add some airiness and some texture to a planter where you want something to just flow over the front but maybe not be quite as loud as something like a super tunia that's going to take over and that's all you're going to, going to be able to see. They can go sun to part sun. I've planted them in the shade before and they were fine. They didn't do much growing. They just sort of sat still but that's okay if, as long as they're big enough they already look pretty neat when they're just chilling out nice light and dainty foliage that the camera does not want to focus on i need a solid background here probably hopefully you've been able to get the picture it's really cute and has a fun texture and i did grab one of these acalphas this one is the firetail chenille plant which is the acalpha pendula i don't know what sets this one aside from the others maybe it's a little bit more floriferous maybe the flower heads on there stay more red the tag doesn't really say anything specifically now the tag just gives the normal details on it fold apart sun i usually do these part sun to part shade that's just me i've noticed they crisp up outdoors if i go much more than that indoors then i would think as much light as you could get it would probably be appropriate i think it said 12 to 18 inches by 12 to 18 inches something like that yeah it's an acalpha they're really fun i just enjoy having them around years back i planted these almost every single summer around my areca palms and some of my other plants because I could find them in great big gigantic hanging baskets for like eight dollars and usually be three to five plants in there and I'd just take a knife divide them up and I'd have them spread all over the garden and I used to love doing that the past few years I haven't seen them for sale at least not as prolifically like the nurseries I'd had one hanging basket and I think true value which are, or ace hardware they had a few of them this spring and that's where i always used to get them they would have them in great big huge hanging baskets you know the it's not as cheap as it used to be either it's not very often i can find any hanging basket for eight bucks let alone one with a calphas in it and so i was happy to get just the one just to have that little reminder that fun tropical texture going on there so cute and fuzzy okay this next one i'm really excited about i, I shouldn't talk it up too much though look at it you see it well you can only see the tag but here's the name this is a salvia it's called fashion orange oh isn't it pretty yes it does just kind of look like your typical salvia i'm trying to find an angle here where the camera might be able to focus on it it might just have to go close in the flowers on this one are so vibrant i see salvia all the time that are in a similar shade of pink but oftentimes they're a little bit more washed out and the leftover flower heads the little hoods that the flowers emerge from usually are just kind of a pale color and these are sort of a i don't really know how to describe that color it's like a brown color but they have a lot of texture to them of the light ribbing which is again those are characteristics of salvia but it's just something the way that paired up with the color of the trumpet coming out i know it said orange as the name but this to me is much more of a coral and that's one of my favorite colors i love coral look at how the new buds look when they're coming up if the camera's going to focus isn't that pretty it's a darker color and i think it's just cute this actually might be my favorite plant that i picked up today i'm really excited about the dragon's wing begonias because i love them as well as the maui gold colocasias but the flowers on this one they're so pretty the camera won't even focus on them it's a gorgeous shade of pink the hummingbirds are going to be so happy about this one i didn't really pay much attention to the tag i was just like oh yep that's a pretty one need to have it where'd the tag go definitely orange in that picture tag doesn't say anything really specific about it it just says slender spires of colorful blooms rise above dark green dramatic leaves excellent for containers baskets but yeah garden beds 20 to 24 inches high that was 20 to 24 inches high i feel like i said that way too fast there are a lot of pink selfies so maybe i'm just a little bit too excited about this one i don't know what it is there's just something about the combination with the darker foliage the darker hoods and then that it's just a gorgeous shade of pink it's a shade of pink that really speaks to me and look at how the little red they start off red in there and then come out as the pink just really cool am i too excited about this one am i nerding out i mean it's just a pink salvia but like i said maybe it's just the combination of all of them but it just it makes me super happy I love this salvia salvia are one of those plants where i tend to plant them and then forget to talk about them these are excellent annuals and perennials if you live someplace where you can grow this type all year round i think this would be a zone nine and up but there are plenty of perennial but there are plenty of perennial varieties uh, where i live in zone six that they put on a show generally mid to late spring into early summer and that's about it for them i think there are some that will do like a little second set 
of flowers later on in the summer if you give them a good cutback. The type that grows annuals should keep doing their thing all summer long. If they get leggy at all, then I just give them a big cutback, but I don't tend to do lots and lots of fertilizing with them. I just stick them in a spot where they're going to get a lot of sun, make sure that they get watered as I would any of my other plants that are in the ground, and they just do their thing and usually grow very, very well. And 20 to 24 inches high, that's actually not that big. There are some salvias that get pretty darn big. So this one, I would say, is going to be a mid to, a, not quite foreground, but it's not going to get tucked away too far back because, well, it'll get lost. Won't even be able to see it. In fact, I like it enough that it may just end up in a container. Why doesn't the camera like to say focus on those flowers? Okay, so there's all of that. And then over here, pick up the camera. And then there were a couple plants that were too big to put onto the table. Just a hydrangea vine. Smells phenomenal. This was at the hardware store and it was like 30 bucks and it's absolutely gigantic. The main reason that I was drawn to it actually was because the caliper of some of the inside growth on those vines. Hydrangea vines are pretty cold hardy, but I've had a few instances where they haven't come back for me. Maybe the winters were too wet, I don't know, but this one has a nice thick caliper on it. Oh, and I should back up. The ones that I had planted that didn't come back for me were really like scrawny, skinny little starts. This is a nice big bulky one, so that obviously shouldn't be a problem. This is gonna do well. I have a spot along the fence where I'm going to put this, help provide some privacy and just the fun. Ugh. So pretty, they smell so nice. And then there was one heliconia left at the nursery and that snatched it up. That's a great find. I've talked about it before. Heliconias are really hard to find around here. They don't really sell them this far north. It's not very often, so snatch that up. And that's everything. Alocasias, wire vine, acalpha, awesome salvia, milkweed, supertunias, dragon's wing begonias. All fun things. Lots and lots of fun stuff. Now I just need to get some more planting done. I have a lot of planting to do. Oh, and I switched the umbrella back over. I shouldn't even have been doing the umbrella thing. I should have waited. You know, I'm trying to rest your back. That wasn't a smart thing to do, but I did it. What's done is done. <laughs> Wonky umbrella. Wire vine is so fun. It, I haven't grown that stuff in such an incredibly long time. When I had grown it, it was a house plant. I haven't done a ton with them in uh, containers and arrangements. I've done a few. That was the one plant that I bought that I wasn't like set out to get. I was hoping to find some salvia. I was hoping to find some larger salvia, but that variety, 20 to 24 inches tall, that's fine. I was hoping to find something that gets a little bit bigger, but it's cool because I like the color. But the wire vine was one that I hadn't necessarily planned on getting, but I'm really glad that I did. One thing that I forgot during the garden tour, I always forget to give the updates on the sedums. So here we go. Here's the donkey's tail. It's flushed out. Got lots of new growth coming out of it. Everything's nice and swollen and plump and looking good. And then I have the other one that's over here right now that also, it's more of a scraggly variety. It's nowhere near as attractive, but it's doing well too. Only bringing that up because I've been getting a lot of comments on my burrow's tail video that I did a few years ago. People saying it looks really dry, which is true. It did. In that video, I was filming it during the winter. And in the video, I talked about how I let them dry out quite a bit during the winter time. They'll get wrinkly. They'll get kind of sad looking, but I only water them just a little bit and very infrequently when I have them inside. When I bring them outside, they get watered more heavily. It's warm outside and they plump right back out. So when I filmed that video, I probably didn't drive it home enough that at the time it was winter and I was just practicing what I was preaching there. Yes, it, they, they did look kind of dry in that video because they were. They were dry, slightly desiccated because that's just how I grow these during the winter time. It's how I avoid having them rot out. They've always been fine and done really well and they're looking pretty good right now. Lots of fun stuff coming out the tops. And here's all those little Maui golds I was talking about. The actual tubers themselves they just don't feel that firm, so I don't want to go pulling and tugging on these very much. I'd rather let them flush out and get some more growth on them. I'm worried if I start pulling them and tugging them to start using them in other arrangements when they're like this, then yeah, I, I just don't think they'll do very well. That's why I got the other ones. I need to do some watering. Some of the plants got kind of dry today, yeah, but the drip is running right now, so I'll hold off on watering to preserve the water pressure. If I have both hoses running, if I water while the drip's running, the drip is totally ineffective. My water pressure sucks. I don't know, if, have I talked about this watering wand? It's Gekka. 
right there. You can put different tips on it. it. Has a quick connect on it that swivels, which is amazing. Like that's might be my favorite thing about this, that quick connect. So when that's on there, you, I don't have to hold the hose and the this the <laughs> hose nozzle at the same time. And the spray pattern on it's pretty nice. It's nice and full. It's one problem I've had with watering ones with having poor water pressure specifically is that sometimes the water just sort of funnels out the front into a heavy stream instead of spreading out the way that it's supposed to. Also like having a thumb catch that's very nice but look at that. It's so nice and even when I've used the dram watering ones like that's one of those ones that where it tends to come out just more like this. More like that when I use a lot of other watering ones with this one. Spreads it out very, very nicely and look at how it moves independently from the hose. Love that. Kinda pricey, thinks this is like 40 bucks, but honestly, I, I don't really feel bad about it. It works so well. I can stand back and water a pretty big space at one time. The head that's on this is gonna be tricky to do. Should have done this while the camera was still on the tripod. But you know what, you just have to trust me. This isn't an infomercial. The head on there twists off. You can put different ones on there with different spray patterns, which is fun. But I do really like the one that it came with. I don't think that I need to put a different head on it because this one is working really well. I'll give the lavender a quick drink because that actually looks really thirsty. But otherwise, I need to stop. I need to stop so that the drip can keep doing its thing. I know that was random, but it's something I've meant to bring up a few times and just kept forgetting that I absolutely love that new watering wand. That was a birthday gift. Very much like it. I think I'm going to wrap it up because I can't really plant things. I would really like to, like I said, the thing with the rib and whatnot. Probably shouldn't even have done this, but I'm glad that I was able to do it and I'm not in pain. So all that goes in a few hours. It should be fine though. It's just a little pinch nerve. It doesn't even hurt very much, but it's in one of those spots where if I aggravate it, it sets off a series of spasms. And there's just so much to get done out here that I'm taking the rest thing very seriously so you can heal up nice and fast and get back to work. Probably by middle next week, should be able to get going with things again. And as I mentioned, I think in the beginning of the video, I have lots of, or maybe they're in the garden too, I don't remember. I have lots of little things placed around things that I can just use the, the auger on. So at the very least, we'll be getting those things done in some containers and whatnot next week. But for now, it's going to take a few more days to just chill and just relax. Trying to be smart about it, but I don't want to. I want to get back to work. There are worse things than having to sit back and just enjoy the garden, though. I'm certainly not going to complain about it. Lots of fun things to do and look at and smell out here. It smells so nice. Oh, and the back thing was another reason that... Not much got done out here between the last vlog and the last garden tour. I didn't want to talk about that during the garden tour because I'm going to be like, wham, 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 my back. Because it really isn't that bad. I'm just trying to be really careful so it doesn't get really bad. It was bad for like two days because of that mishap with the shiatsu massager. Not doing that again. I was hoping to have like nice fresh mulch down and some more stuff planted, but it's all right. It was all cold and rainy last week anyway, so I probably wouldn't have gotten that done regardless. I don't think I would have. Pool cleaner's floating around in there like it's dead. What's going on there? And it's missing a wheel. Wonder where that went. It looks like it wrapped itself up there. Ah, there you go. Fixed it. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I know, different kind of vlog. Just a chill, run around, get some plants, look at plants kind of day. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And comment down below what's going on in your gardens people are starting to get some warmth finally, get some things planted, favorite types of salvias, colocasias. There's so many varieties. What do y'all like? What are some of your favorites? Or just say hi. I love talking to everybody. You see the sun's getting ready to set. Some mosquitoes are going to start to swarm. Need to move all of this to a shadier spot because that will fry in the morning. The hydrangea vine more than anything else. That's not, no. Need to move that. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.